Shri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Precharine Nirishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita nam pavane bio, Vaishnavibyo namo namaha. Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We're discussing the Brihad Bhagavatamrita, second part, which tells about the travels of a cowherd boy from Govardhan named Gop Kumar. <laughs> To Dwarka. And in Dwarka he met with Narada Muni and Uddhava. So Narada Muni was explaining to Gop Kumar that there's a place beyond Dwarka in the spiritual sky which is Goloka and in Goloka there are many wonderful devotees. And he's explaining to him that Goloka and Goku, which is in on the planet Earth, are practically non different. And Narada Muni was explaining the different pastimes of Lord Krishna, which he performed in Goku, and how he was always, Lord Krishna is always enjoying with these wonderful devotees in Vrindavan. And among all these people in Goku, these cowherd ladies, the gopis, are the greatest devotees of Krishna. So one of the the differences between Goloka and Goku is that on the earth planet Gokula not everyone can see Krishna all the time. But in Goloka, everyone can see Krishna all the time. But in Gokula, on this earth planet, Krishna comes only one time in a day of Brahma. Krishna, 
And that will be at the end of a Dwapara Yuga. Dwapara Yuga. Dwapara Yuga. Remember, there's uh, uh, what's it called? Tong Chi Nian Dai? Just like 5,000 years ago, Lord Krishna came. That was actually the very special time in the day of Brahma when Lord Krishna comes. So in Vaikuntha, in Vaikuntha, Krishna has his associates, people like Garuda, are always with him. Krishna right? Garuda is the bird the bird carrier of Lord Krishna. Takes him different places when he want, wherever he wants to go. And Garuda will also sometimes will he will protect Krishna from the hot sun. But in Goloka, Garuda is not there, but Nanda Maharaj is there, and the people of Vrindavan, and they're always with Krishna. And they're with him both on Go Gokula and in Goloka at the same time. Just like Krishna can expand himself, his great devotees like Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, they can also expand. So they're in both places with Krishna for for their pleasure and for Krishna's pleasure. They, So, of course, we would, we would also like to see Krishna's pastimes. We would all like to see Krishna's pastimes. So there's a particular practice, it's a spiritual discipline which is required to actually enter in, to, to, to be able to see these pastimes. So, Gokumar, if he wants to see Krishna in Gokula, uh, or even if he wants to see Krishna, he doesn't need to go back to earth because he's already in Vaikuntha. He's already up in Dwarka, beyond Vaikuntha. But to go into Goloka, you have to have a special you have to do special practice, you have to have special sadhana. Goloka, you 
个人需要嗯修起特殊的萨特纳，一种特殊的。But but for people like Nanda Maharaj, Nanda Maharaj, he's Nitya Siddha. He's an eternally liberated soul. He doesn't have to do the spiritual practice because he's already perfect. But for Nanda Maharaj, Nanda Dajun, he already is Nitya Siddha, with a perfect soul. He doesn't need to practice meditation. He's already perfect. So there's different stages which devotees may reach. You see, some devotees they may be able to, they may be, may be able to see Krishna, but they may not be able to see Krishna doing engaging his pastimes. Um, so, um, And some other devotee, they may be may be able to see Krishna's pastimes, but they're not able to take part in Krishna's pastimes. So different. There's different stages of perfection. 就是完美的不同阶段。嗯 ，So Narada Muni says to Gop Kumar, he said, "It's how he said, 'How is it you are so eager to 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 see all these pastimes?'" Narada Muni 就嗯对 Gop Kumar 说，嗯，那你是又为什么你那么渴望要见到 Krishna 的消失光呢 ？Because it's just a simple cowherd boy. From Govardhan, he's not so educated, but still he's so eager. He wants so much to take part in Krishna's pastimes. Govardhan Kumar, 仅仅是 Govardhan 山的一个简单的呃淳朴的牧牛童而已。他没有受过什么教育，他又如何变得有这么渴望想要见到这消失光呢？ So Narada Muni says to him, he says, "You you have to understand, it's very difficult to get to achieve this perfection in spiritual practice." Narada Muni tells Gopal Kumar, "You must understand, to want to achieve such a perfect spiritual state is very difficult." Of course, Gopal Kumar will say, "Well, come on, you can give me your blessings. You're a great devotee. If you bless me, then I can do it." But Narada Muni says, "Well, even my mercy will not be a much help. <laughs> my mercy is not sufficient." So this way, Narada Muni wants to really test Gop Kumar. Does he really want to achieve this? So Narada Muni, 呢，他就是这样子在试验，呃，格帕库马，他是不是真的想要达到这一完美境界呢？嗯。So Narada Muni said, "There's only a few human beings who know how to behave properly in this world." We see there are so many living entities. There are so many living entities, and they have so many different bodies. Some have insects, some plants, some birds, animals, but they have no intelligence. 嗯，有这么多种类的，诸多种类的生物，昆虫、植物、鸟类、动物，它们种类繁多。They don't have the intelligence to know what is spiritual life. 他们没有没有恰当的智慧去了解什么是灵性的生活。嗯、mm. ，So even among human beings, only a few human beings. Can understand what is right and what is wrong. Even among human beings, only a few human beings can understand what is right and what is wrong. Even among human beings, only a few human beings can understand what is right and what is wrong. Even among human beings, only a few human beings can understand what is right and what is wrong. Even among human beings, only a few
但是在人类当中呢，也只有少数的人类才能有这个分辨力，知道是什么是正确的，什么是错误的。We know when when we try to tell people you shouldn't eat meat, you shouldn't do this, you sh we tell them a rule, they cannot understand what's wrong. They think what's wrong with that. 当我们告诉人们，呃，你们不应该吃肉，有这样的规则，那样的规则，他们就会反问：啊，这有什么错呢 ？So they they're only interested in money and sense gratification. 他们满脑子想的都是怎么赚钱，想的都是感官享乐。And there's just maybe a few, just a small number of people who are interested in actually being religious and thinking about. Getting a better life, going to the higher planets. And and about the 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 few people who may go to the higher planets, there's only a few who will 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 want to go there without material desires. Um, And among them, there's a few who there's very less number who may want liberation. Only a few, you know. It's very rare people even think about liberation. And of those people who may think about liberation, then there's an even less number who are transcendental, who are really liberated souls. And then from them, there's even less number who are really devotees, who are surrendered, dedicated to the service of Krishna, the Lord. So, so we see some people are they may be doing yoga, they're steady in their practice of yoga, and some and from these, some people actually understand the self. This they really under know who they've realized their self. So those who have understood the self, they are paramahamsa. But many of these people, they they get that level just by some good karma. So you get a few liberated souls. Only a few are perfect. And less than that, you get some people who are actually devotees. Right, and the devotees they understand liberation is not important. These 
些奉献者明白，解脱并不重要。There's as many living entities as there are atoms. In other words, there's, a, an, a, there's an infinite number of living entities. Just like there's an infinite number of atoms, there's an infinite number of living entities. So among all these living entities, only very few have human body. And even less than that, you get people, very few people who are religious. And of those people who are religious, only a few are. I'm interested to get liberation. So to get liberation, they have to give up all material attachment to the family and the society and everything. And there's among these liberated souls, there's only a very few actually know what is real liberation. Right. The the perfection of knowledge of liberation is to be a devotee of Narayan or Krishna. So even among the devotees of the Lord, there's also some differences. Right, there may be many devotees, but only a few are, they will give their heart to become this, the friend of Lord Krishna. So the method, the method of practice will be different according to the different goal people want to achieve. So Vedic, the Vedic scriptures describe different things for different people. Just like in the scriptures, the Vedas, they may teach more about economic development because people are very interested to get sense gratification. And they'll teach less, the, the, the Vedas teach, they teach a bit less about religion. And then they'll teach even less about liberation. And they'll teach even less about devotional service. So 
So to get economic development and sense gratification, there's a lot of things people can do. Yeah, use the, they can use their body, mind, words, in so many ways to get economic development and sense gratification. But for religious pra practice, for re religious practice, people have to do things like give charity and go to visit holy places. And they should cultivate proper behavior, practice austerity. This is all good for religious life. But to get liberation, it's more difficult. There's not so many things you can do to get liberation. You have to come to, you have to practice things like Astanga Yoga. And to, to do Bhakti Yoga, people have to do hearing and chanting. So we don't find much about hearing and chanting in a lot of many scriptures. They don't speak about that hearing and chanting. They'll speak more about how to get economic development and sense gratification. So you can see how it's difficult to, to get pure devotional service. But if we want to go to Goloka, you have to develop pure love for Krishna. So then Narada Muni says to Gopta Kumar, he said, um, there are different devotees of Krishna, but he said, I cannot, I'm not able to describe them. Because they're in the home of Uddhava. Uddhava is present and Narada Muni knows Uddhava is more qualified than him to speak about this very confidential topic. Yeah, because they're going to speak about the special mood of the gopis and their service to Krishna. So Narada Muni embraced Uddhava and then he begged him, he said, please, please, you tell us about this. So Uddhava, he bows, bows his head and then he says, I offer my obeisances to the dust, the dust from the feet of the women of Vrindavan, in other words, the gopis. Uddhava, 
。像那些问他们的牧牛女，向他们足下的尘土致以我谦卑的顶礼。So for a short for a, a short time, Uddhava appeared to be very distressed and disturbed. But then he took hold of Narada's feet, and he began to speak. So Uddhava describes, he says, the gopis of Vrindavan, they gave up the association of their husbands and their sons and their family. Uddhava says, these Vrindavan gopis have given up their husbands, sons and family. Uddhava said, these things are very difficult to give up, but the gopis, they give them up. And they gave up even their chastity to take shelter of Krishna. So Uddhava says, he said, I, I, will, I would like the blessing to be one of the bushes or the grass in Vrindavan because the gopis trample them and that way I can get the dust from their feet. Uddhava said, I want to be able to get a blessing to be one of the bushes or the grass in Vrindavan. So after saying this, Uddhava jumped up and he began to speak more about these gopis. He became very emotional and very, very ecstatic. 说完这番话呢，乌德瓦就是，嗯，跳了起来，嗯，这时候他变得，嗯，更加的狂喜，而且他充满了感情，内心。Udva describes, he said, when Krishna was dancing with the gopis in Rasalila, the gopis were embraced by Krishna. Udva 说，当 gopi 们和 Krishna 一起共跳 Rasa 之舞的时候，主 Krishna 就拥抱着他们。He said this favor was never given to Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. 这种幸运，甚至没有赐予幸幸运女神 Lakshmi。Even the other ladies in the spiritual world, the consorts of the Lord, they never got that pleasure. And even these, the most beautiful women in the heavenly planets, they could never achieve this. So even the ordinary women here, who are very beautiful, but they, they have no chance to ever enjoy this pleasure which was given to the gopis. So then Narada Muni became, he was very surprised and he, he looked at Gop Kumar and he, uh, begins to speak. Narada Muni 呢，就变得非常的惊讶
那么他就看着 Gopakumar 开始讲话。Because Narada Muni could understand how difficult it was to get this love to go to Goloka. So Narada Muni says, Uddhava is the best of all the devotees of Krishna. Because he's so much absorbed in the in the in the mood in glorifying the gopis. And he and he said, just look at Urvan that he's praying to take birth as a blade of grass just so he can get the dust from the feet of the gopis. Then Narada says. One of Krishna's most favorite wife is Rukmini, and she she is she is very dear to Lord the Lord. And Rukmini, she gave up. The religious principles of a, an aristocratic lady, just to be with Krishna. Rukmini 放弃了，嗯，就是作为一个，呃，放弃了宗教原则，就成为一个高贵的女士的宗教原则，只是跟为了跟主 Krishna 生活在一起。Because Rukmini's brother had arranged her marriage to another man, but Rukmini wrote to Krishna and told Krishna to come and kidnap her and take her away. So when Krishna got the letter, he came there, and Rukmini, she was just about to be married to this other man, but Krishna came and kidnapped her. And Rukmini had so much. Love for Krishna and so much attachment to Krishna that sometimes Krishna will joke with her. Rukmini 呢是深爱着嗯 Krishna， 非常依附 Krishna。但是有一次呢 ，Krishna 就跟他开玩笑。Yeah. One time when Rukmini and Krishna already had grandchildren, but Krishna joked with Rukmini and said, "You know." I am not really a good husband for you. I am not qualified to be your husband. Yeah, he said there were so many good men who wanted to marry you. He said, "I'm just a cowherd. I'm just from the family of the cowherd people." He said, "They were all kings." He said, "I think you should go to them." But if you will go with them, you go to them. I think you'll have a better life than with me. And when Rukmini heard this, she just fainted. She just fell unconscious. Uh, Ruk, I 
我觉得如果你跟这些伟大的君王结婚呢，会比跟我在一起生活有更好、更幸福的生活。当 Rukmini 听完这番话之后，就直接的就晕了过去。<笑> Rukmini almost died out of fear that Krishna was going to give her up. Rukmini 几乎就是因为害怕被主 Krishna 放弃，而就几乎嗯被呃。So Rukmini is, you know, she's very fortunate that she's the wife of Krishna, but she's she's not equal to the gopis. Rukmini is 如此的幸运，以致成为主 Krishna 的妻子，但是甚至她也不能跟那些高品牧牛姑娘媲美。The special favor which is given to the gopis, the position of the gopis, is they're greater than anybody else. Only any of these other wives of Krishna. 嗯，那些高品牧牛姑娘所获得的特殊的恩宠，甚至超过了主 Krishna 的这些伟大的妻子们。And, and Rukmini's position, Rukmini's position, she, she is, she's a greater devotee than Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. But. Even though Rukmini is greater than the goddess of fortune, she cannot equal the gopis. So that these ladies who are Krishna's wives in Dwarka. They're all very attractive, beautiful women. They're just like women of heaven. The most beautiful women are said to be in the heavenly planets, because Krishna's wives are all very beautiful. But they cannot. Still, Krishna is more attractive to the gopis. Krishna has sixteen thousand one hundred and eight queens. Jo Krishna 有一万六千一百零八个零零八个妻子 And from from all of these queens, eight are very principal. They're the main queens. 而在这一万六千一百零八位王后当中，有八位是主要的王后。Among the eight queens, you have queens like Kalindi and Satyabama, and the best, of the the most, the prominent of the eight queens, there's Rukmini. But even Rukmini never gets the same favor as the gopis that Krishna gives the gopis. So if even Rukmini doesn't get it, then the other queens they don't have a chance to get any of the favor, special favor of Krishna.
So Uddhava saying, he said, I'm just, he said, I'm, I'm just an insignificant person. I don't have any right to try to describe about these gopis. Oh, oh, sorry, Narada speaking. Narada said this. Narada said, I have no right to speak. He said, but Uddhava, he is special. He has it. He knows about the gopis. Because Krishna had sent Uddhava from Dwarka to go to Vrindavan to deliver a message to the gopis. So at that time Uddhava was able to meet all the people of Vrindavan and he was able to see how much love they had for Krishna. And when Uddhava, when Uddhava was in Vrindavan, he got so much mercy from the gopis that he forgot all about Krishna. So Uddhava is very close to Krishna uh, and Krishna considers Uddhava worthy to get special mercy from him, from Krishna. And that special mercy was Krishna sent Uddhava to Vrindavan and then in Vrindavan he was able to see how the gopis love Krishna. Hmm. The gopis, even they would see Krishna face to face, still they would feel separation from Krishna. Because the gopis were always in this separation, ecstasy of separation, so this was, this was, Uddhava was able to see this, how they were in, in separation from Krishna. And this was the mercy, this was the special mercy Uddhava was getting from the gopis. And so because Uddhava was with the gopis, he, he, he just forgot all about Krishna. Although he'd been friends with Krishna since a child, he forgot all about Krishna when he came into the association of the gopis. So there's a person called Akrura who is the uncle of Krishna and he was given also special mercy. He was sent to Vrindavan to bring Krishna from Vrindavan to Mathura. 
有一个嗯名叫阿库拉的人物，他是主 Krishna 的叔叔，他得到了特殊仁慈，是他也被派到了本达本，把 Krishna 从本达本带到马图拉。嗯 ，Yeah, he was sent by Kamsa. Kamsa gave him a chariot, a new chariot, and told him, "Go to Vrindavan and bring Krishna and Balaram." So, Akrura was an old. He was an old man, and his he had he had a lot of dry knowledge. He was a a gyani. 的，嗯，枯燥的、枯燥的知识，吉安尼，他是一位吉安尼思辨家。The the name Akrura means one who is not cruel, but Akrura b e c a 所以他变成了残忍的。所以他的心是很干燥的，因为他不知道这个。所以他的心是枯燥的、干枯的，因为他不了解奉献服务的 rasa 思维。所以他没有感激之心。For the the mood of the gopis, the people of Vrindavan. If he had known, then he would never have taken on that service to bring Krishna away from Vrindavan. But still, he was, you know, he he understood about Krishna, and he was meditating on Krishna's lotus feet. He was speaking about how Krishna is. He would glorify Krishna with his words. That Krishna is the supreme, and he was appreciating also the wonderful qualities of the gopis. He used So we're told about what Akrur Akrur was thinking as he came to Vrindavan. 就是描述了当 Akrur 他前往本达文的途中，他的所思所想。That he's thinking about how the lotus feet of Krishna are worshipped by so many demigods, even Lord Brahma. And even Lord Shiva. Hmm. That he is in thinking. To Krishna's lotus feet, even the great gods, Brahma, Shiva, are worshipped. He is going to describe in a progression from the lowest to the highest. So he begins speaking about the demigods. And among the demigods, Brahma is the topmost demigod, and above Brahma even is Lord Shiva. He 
And above Lord Shiva is the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi. And then you've got also the devotees, the Vaishnavas and the great sages. And above that you've got Krishna's cowherd boyfriends, the gopas, the cowherd boys who walk with Krishna in the forests of Vrindavan. And, and, and even greater than the cowherd boys of Vrindavan are the cowherd ladies of Vrindavan, the gopis. So this is how a crewer is thinking on his way to Vrindavan to meet Krishna. The Brahma and the demigods, they worship Krishna. He is the Supreme. And Lakshmi, she is giving wealth to different people. She bestows blessings which will bring people wealth. But she also worships Krishna. So it means the lotus feet of Krishna are a greater wealth than any wealth Lakshmi can give. And then great sages, they're not interested to get the blessings of the goddess of fortune. They don't even think about material wealth, but they also worship Krishna's lotus feet. So Krishna's lotus feet is the highest goal of life. And the devotees, they're only interested in pure devotional service. They also don't want anything material. They're not interested in liberation. So Krishna gives, gives himself to these devotees. So karmi, karmi and jnanis, they may be on the sp they may be elevated, but they're not on the level of devotees. And the devotees are above all these people. And above all these people, the, among the, the, cow, the devotees, we've got the cowherd boys. And 
and Krishna, he enjoys great happiness there with the cowherd boys. He's very attached to being with them and to playing with them. So although the cowherd boys, their devotees, they do a different kind of worship. They don't worship Krishna in a formal way, but they worship Krishna by their friendship with him. And Krishna's relationship with the gopis is even more special because Krishna gives very special love for the gopis. This is Krishna's most famous of all of his pastimes with his devotees, is his loving relationship with the gopis. But unfortunately, it's often not understood properly. So Uda was thinking like this as he's approaching Vrindavan, he's thinking that when I get to Vrindavan and I will, I say I will bow down to the lotus feet of Krishna and Balaram. Yeah. Because these lotus feet are what all the great sages, they're all keeping within their minds, they all take shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. So I also want to offer my obeisances to these lotus feet. And Uddhava said, Akrura, Akrura says, I will offer my obeisances to Krishna's boyfriends, the cowherd boys, and all the people of Vrindavan. And Uddhava says, when I fall at his feet, at the feet of Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna will place his lotus hand upon my head. And when that hand touches my head, it takes away, will take away all fear, the fear of the material world and the effects of time. In the material world, everybody is fearful about the effects of time. But if we get the right association this by Vaishnava, 
associate, association with the devotee, we can, uh, we can become fearless. Okay. So we will stop. Stop here, yeah. Uh, uh, then we have a question left by last Saturday night. This is from uh, anonymous devotee. Ding Bai Gurmara Lian Hazu. Ding Bai Fan Yi. Ching Wen Shang Wu Yuan Ben Sing Shi Fu. Jig Fu the Ben Sing Zali Pai Chiti Yasun Zaima. A basis to uh, Lotus Feet of Gurmara. Uh, my question is that when living, uh, the living entity's eternal nature is service. When they left their body, this uh, nature of service still exists? Yes. Because the nature of the soul is service. It's not just the nature of the body, it's the nature of the soul. So the soul is eternal. So we take that nature with us wherever we go. All, all living entities, we have that nature, the constitutional position of all living entities is to be servant. But we see people, instead of serving Krishna, they're serving the dog, they're serving the, they're serving so many other things instead of Krishna. So, when our consciousness is purified, then we will engage in the service of Krishna. That is our constitutional position, where we're meant to be. We're meant to be engaged in Krishna's service. But instead of serving Krishna, we serve the family, the society, the country, we serve the, the dog, we serve the car, we're serving so many other people. So we cannot give up being servant. In every situation you see, mother is serving the child, husband is serving the wife, teacher is serving the students, students serve the teacher. Every, we, have, we all have that nature to be servant. We have to learn to direct our service to Krishna. Alright. 
淡然一笑。狗卢卡本达们有男大男大大军吗？和这个地球上的男大大军是一个人吗？据说这个地球狗哭了的男大大军。有前世的苦行，才能成为 Krishna 的养父。嗯、is there Nanda Maharaj in Goloka Vrindavan? Is it the, is is he the same person、uh, as that in in this earth? Yes. 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 是是的，有 Goloka Vrindavan 有文大有南大大军和地球上的是一个人。嗯哼。So it said that、uh, Nanda Maharaj, because of his past、uh, austerity in his past life, that he became Krishna's stepfather. No, that's not true. 不是的，不，这个不是，不是这样的。Nanda Maharaj is Nitya Siddha. He's always Krishna's father. He didn't do austerities to become Krishna's father. 南大大军是 Nitya Siddha， 他是 Krishna 永恒的父亲，他是他不是因为做了苦行，才才成为主 Krishna 的养父。嗯。嗯。The the next one， 嗯，喜宝。Hare Krishna， 顶拜 Guru 和老师们，听 Guru 讲了那么多那么久，各帕库马尔穿越星球的故事，我有两个疑问，请 Guru 回答。一，作为被物质元素污染和覆盖的普通人类，我们该如何培养像库马尔那样一心一意专注于服务主 Krishna 的品质呢 ？So, Hare Krishna basis guru and teachers,、uh, after listening so、uh, such a long times about、uh, Gopal Kumar's travel across planets, I have two questions.、Uh, I want guru to、uh, answer. The first one is that as、um, Ordinary human being that is covered by material elements、uh, and polluted by material elements. So how can we cultivate、uh, the quality of Gopal Kumar, who、uh, is devoted to the Supreme Lord,、uh, single-minded? Yes, we can cultivate these qualities by engaging in bhakti yoga. Beginning with hearing and chanting, and strictly following the four regulated principles. Um, we can through observing bhakti yoga the routine to cultivate these qualities. Through listening, chanting, through closely observing the four regulated principles, to cultivate the four regulated principles. We have to hear. We have to hear about people like Gop Kumar. We have to hear about the spiritual world. Um, we need to listen to about Gopal Kumar's things. Listen to about the spiritual world things. And if we hear more, we'll also become attracted. We'll also be thinking, we want to go there. As we hear more and more, we will be attracted. We will also be thinking, we want to go there. Second part. Next part. Next part. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, the second part of question is that, 既然灵魂是永恒全知的，如果我在当下此生就不断训练自己的奉爱品质，请问咕噜会在关键时刻以某种力量来帮助我吗？就像喜马拉雅山那些神秘的咕噜一样吗？感恩。Since the soul is eternal, such it. If I、uh, train myself at the present moment about、um, to cultivate devotional quality,、uh, may I ask a Guru to help me at the critical moment by some power,、uh, just like those mystic Guru in Himalaya mountain. Well, the guru is helping you at every moment by giving his instructions, by giving his teachings. Guru 实际上是时时刻刻的都在通过 guru 的训示，通过 guru 的教导
So when you need special help, then the Guru's instructions will come there. It may come simply, it may appear in your mind, or he may directly come and instruct you. Just like she, we see Srila Vyasadev, Srila Vyasadev had written uh, so many books. He'd written 18 Puranas and the Mahabharata, but he was not satisfied. He was very despondent and he could not understand what was wrong. So at that time his spiritual master appeared and came to him and instru instructed him. Now sometimes the spiritual master may, he may speak to us, he may, you may be listening to the lecture of the spiritual master and you may find within the message of the spiritual master, the instruction you want is there. You have to understand that everything you need to know has been told to you in the books of Srila Prabhupada. Just like if you have a problem, think what problem you have, right? You have a problem, okay, you think you have this problem, one, just one problem, you know, I know you have many other problems, but take one, what's the most biggest problem you have? You think about it, okay, now think of a number between 50 and 800, uh, 850. Between 50 and 850, you think of a number, right? Right? Now open the Bhagavad Gita at that number. That number you think of, find that page in the Bhagavad Gita, open the Bhagavad Gita. And now you read that page and you'll find the answer to your problem in that page. All the answers to your problems are there in Prabhupada's books. And when the Guru is speaking, he's just speaking what he's read from Prabhupada's books. So it's not that you need something more. You just need to make use of what you've got. Okay, yes. 
。下 OK， 下一个问题，老金主，顶顶拜 Maharaj， 顶拜主持，请问，课中提到 Krishna 的奉献者非常含有，比至尊天鹅还还要含有。佛家梵歌第七章也这么说，原因是什么呢？ There are several question mark. 嗯，是 Krishna 严格筛选呢，还是 Krishna 还是人们不识货呢 ？So obeisance Mahara and in your lecture you mentioned that the devotee of Krishna is very rare. Even uh the number is even even less than those Paramahamsa. In Bhagavad Gita chapter seven, it is also said like that. So I wonder what's the reason for that. Is it that because those are strictly selected by Lord Krishna, or because of um, people they they are not they cannot recognize they they don't have the recognition. Yes, you have to. We have to understand the qualification of the, to get devotional service. You don't get devotional service just simply by karma. Uh, we need to understand that to get devotional service, you don't get just simply by karma. Uh, we need to understand that to get devotional service, you don't get just simply by karma. Just simply by their karma. But to become a devotee, a real devotee of Krishna, we're talking about a genuine devotee, a pure devotee. It's very rare. It's not just karma. It's it's the you have to get the mercy of a devotee. 但是如果要成成为 Krishna 的奉献者是极其含啊，我们这里提到的是真正的奉献者，一个纯粹的奉献者，这是十分罕见的。这不是靠 karma 他的因果来得到的，而是要通过得到一个奉献者的仁慈。Right, we get bhakti from a, somebody who has bhakti. 我们必须要从一个拥有 bhakti 的人。So we have to find out that person who's got bhakti, and we have to get it from them. Now some devotees are very merciful. Then they may give bhakti, but not everybody wants it. Not everybody wants to be like the devotee. They, they think our devotees, they don't have money, they're not rich, they don't enjoy. No, I don't want to be like them. People want sense gratification. They don't want devotional service. 人们想要的是感官享乐，他们不想要奉献服务。嗯哼 ，Yeah. What else? What else does he ask? It's okay. It's you answered all the questions. I think. Okay. 嗯 ，the the the other， 呃，下一个问题是来自于喜宝，喜宝。顶拜咕噜，我还有另外一个问题，请咕噜解答。我在佛法和 Krishna 之觉里看到过，对生活很失望的人，他们说，一方面被自己过去的罪恶的当下无法突破的罪恶品质而厌恶自己；另一方面，对现在这个充满黑暗和陷和充满黑暗和陷阱的世界感到绝望。请问咕噜，一如果一个人在真理。在知识真理的沐浴下，有了忏悔和罪恶感，他是否可以学习 sakti sakti 女？可以学习 sakti 女神，那样向神祈祷，死亡哦，祈祷死亡
结束此生，重新开始下一次新生命中，开始方案服务呢 ？So, um, of this guru, I have another question. Um, I, I saw some uh, people. Uh, so in my practice of Buddhism and Krishna consciousness, I met some people who are very disappointed about life, and on the one hand, they are very disgusted with themselves because of their own uh, previous sinful activity and their own bad quality they cannot break through. On the other hand, they are dis very despair with this material world that is full of darkness and full of those uh, pit. So my question is that uh, first, uh, the first part is that if one, um, one, um, under the faith of uh, absolute truth and the knowledge, one feels very regretful, and they have a sense of, uh, uh, they felt very themselves very sinful, sinful, and uh, under such circumstances, can they? learn from Sati, I think Shakti, Shakti Devi, that uh, she prayed to God to finish their lives by death and they can begin a new life and to begin devotional service. Shakti. Devotional service is a new life. When you take initiation from the spiritual master, that is the second birth. You have to prepare for the initiation seriously. You have to give up all your sinful activities and you said you have to regret and feel very repentant about your past sinful activities. Then you have to take up the devotional activities and you have to show your genuine sincerity to begin the new life. So this, this is the actual new life. You don't have to you don't have to give up this body, you just simply have to give up the past consciousness, change the consciousness. So it is said, everyone has a mother and father, but only the fortunate person has the spiritual teacher, and by the grace of the spiritual teacher, they can connect to Krishna. So the, the, the seminal birth, the first birth of the material body, is not so important. What's more important is the second birth at the time of the spiritual initiation. Is it clear, Sibal? So he, she, 
she had a second part of question is that 如果一个人是强烈的带着奉爱愿望以选择自杀离开躯体能否在下一世获得奉献者的仁慈遇到亏损的直觉吗 If one selects to um, left his body by su taking suicide and uh, with strong devotional desire, can this person in the next life achieve the mercy of devotee and met, meet Krishna consciousness? No. No. It's not possible. If it was possible, then we could all commit suicide. This is a stupid idea. Don't think that you can ever get Krishna by committing. The body is given by the grace of Krishna. You have to use it for Krishna's service. You're not going to change your situation just by committing suicide. You're going to carry your karma with you. So cannot change the situation by suicide and uh, what about karma? The karma will be there, still be there. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so even if one person in this way ends his life, his karma will always follow him. And if you commit suicide to the body, you are if you commit suicide to the body, you are destroying the body given to, given to you by Krishna, so you take on more karma. And you can become a ghost in your next life. Because you destroyed the material body, so you're not given a gross body in the next life. The next question? Uh -huh. Devotees of Krishna enter the Krishna planet, Goloka Vandava, for the person personalists there. There are also innumerable other planets known, uh, known as Vaikunta planets in the spiritual sky, whereas the impersonalists remain in the Brahma Jyotir. Personal, yeah. Yeah, personal this. To shama. The personal this they they go, uh, they will go to Vaikunta. So the personal this here, mm, it refers to what kind of personal this? Well, they have to be devotees. Without material desire. If you're going to go into Vaikuntha, to the spiritual world, they have to be free of material desires. And they have to be in the mood of giving loving service to Krishna. Krishna. 
No, nobody else gets to go to the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. Devotees of Krishna go to Goloka. What about the devotee of Iskhan? They, they worship Krishna. Where are they going? Well, it will depend on their mood in worshipping Krishna. If they cultivate the mood of the people of Vrindavan, the mood of Ragabhati, then they can enter into Goloka. To enter into Goloka, they have to have, they, you have to cultivate this mood of the people of Vrindavan. It has to be spontaneous devotion. If we are simply following the rules and regulations and we're doing Vaidhi Bhakti, and generally that mood is more prominent in Vaikuntha. The next question? Yes. 下一个问题还是Rajanpabuddha. 我在放歌第八章提到 Yuga Mishra Bhakti的瑜伽师 也能到达灵性星宿 困惑是这种瑜伽师 只是打坐冥想，至尊就能回到灵性星宿，不是通过奉献符，我感到有点困惑迷惑。So in the chapter eight of Bhagavad Gita, um, they said that uh, those yoga mishra bhakti, those yogis that practice yoga mishra bhakti, they can also attain spiritual planets. I'm bewildered. They only sit there, meditate on the spring, and then they can return to the spiritual planets, not through devotional service. I feel puzzled. The yogis. Well, just like Durvasa Muni, he could go to the spiritual world, but he couldn't stay there. So you're saying these are Misra Bhaktas, they're mixed devotees. You have to see what, what are they mixed with. Are they mixed with the uh, with gyan, with knowledge? If they're mixed with knowledge, they're, they're, they have some devotion to Krishna, but mixed with transcendental knowledge. Well, they could go to go, they could go to the spiritual world. They can enter there, and maybe they'll have shantaras. In Shantaras, they appreciate the opulence of Krishna, but they don't engage in any service. Just like in some different objects there in Shantarasa, 
the trees, the plants, the cows, their enchanteras. So these yogis, they're there in the spiritual world, they're med they have no material desires, but they have some devotion to Krishna, but it's mixed with knowledge. And so they meditate, they're, they're there, and, and their object of their attention is Krishna. So sometimes they're able to see Krishna, sometimes they're able to even see, maybe able to see Krishna's pastimes. If they're more advanced, they're able to see Krishna's pastimes. But those who are even more advanced, they will take part in Krishna's pastimes. So what do you want? Do you want to just see Krishna? Or do you want to see Krishna's pastimes? Do you want to take part in Krishna's pastimes? So it will depend on our devotion, how much we're really attached to Krishna and loving Krishna. And as we heard, there's, there's a discipline, there's a special practice you have to follow. You want to enter into Goloka, you want to go into Krishna's pastime, there's a special spiritual practice you have to do. There's, there are special, there's de, the particular discipline which we have to follow and spiritual practices we have to do. You see, in India they have the custom that somebody who is about the same age as your father, then you will, you will refer to them as uncle, even though there they may not be actual uh, relationship there, but because they are of a similar age and maybe from the same place, so you will speak to them, you will call them uncle. So we're told he, Akrura is an old man, and so we would think Jojo. 
他哭了，他嗯年是嗯上年纪的人，所以称之为舅舅。Meaning the older uncle, right? 嗯嗯，舅舅 means the from the mother's side, and uncle 叔叔 means from father's side. Oh. Oh, like that. Shu Shu is from the the father's side. Yes, like Kang Sa is the Jiu Jiu. Mm-hmm. So she she's asking. So, so I'm well. I said you know it, it doesn't have to be that kind of relationship, actual to the actual family, but just because he's of that kind of age. To be like the the father of the similar age to the father of Krishna, so he's referred to as uncle. So that means the father or father, right? It, but I said it's not. Okay, it's, okay. There's not that uh, relationship. Common in India that people will do like that. You know, somebody's the age of their father, so you refer to him as uncle, oh, uncle. You know, there's no no actual physical relationship, but just because of that, they're of that similar age, we will refer to them. It's a respectful, friendly way of talking to people. 就是一种尊敬的方式，一种友爱的方式来尊尊称长者，就是大叔啊，大叔。But we know Akrura is the son of Swafalka, so you know I don't know where Swafalka comes, who is related to. I don't know. It's not a good practice to judge other people. Because we don't know what is their internal consciousness. We don't know how much they're really attached to Vrindavan and to Krishna. It's not. Something which we can always see. You know, within our own spiritual practice, we have many things in relation to Vrindavan. Just like before we give class, generally we both sing Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari. 
一灵修当中有很多跟本达本相关的事物，比如说在每次上课之前，我们唱的扎扎的玛达吧。And we think the Govinda prayers were worshiping Krishna and Govinda Madipur Samtam. You know, these are very, they're very rasika. They're very elevated things. They can be very elevated, but they can be also on very low platform, depending on the individual and how our mind is absorbed, how we're meditating. 所唱的那个温达阿迪普鲁莎听到的这首，嗯、呃，这首歌歌曲，它是相当的 rasika， 就是，嗯，有着自发的，也是非常进步的。但是这这个我们也可以，也可能一个人是非常进步的层面，他也可能是为低的层面，这取决于他的个体，个体他是的心意是专注于什么，他冥想的是什么。So, I wouldn't recommend you to try to judge where is someone. The second part? Yeah. You you said that uh, we have to to have special spiritual practice to go uh, enter into Goloka. Can you explain it? Well, that will be explained as we go on. You just wait. Generally, the mood is to cultivate this mood of the gopis, the feeling of separation from Krishna. And Prabhupada mentions this many times in his books. Lord Chaitanya and all his devotees, they cultivated this mode of separation from Krishna. So being anxious, when is Krishna coming? When will Krishna come? Very much longing, Krishna, when will Krishna come? Hello,还有好几个，三个。继续。下一下一个问题是，呃，奉献者他叫黄，顶拜咕噜，顶拜所有奉献者。刚才听到课堂上说，Shiva地位比Brahma高，他俩都是半神人，而且Brahma是主创
就希望呢，他以 Brahman 儿子的身份呢出生，这并不意味着嗯 Brahman 的地位就高于主 Shiva， 他只是主 Shiva 以这种形式显现于物质世界。Just like Krishna takes birth as the son of Nanda Maharaj, doesn't mean doesn't mean Nanda Maharaj is greater than Krishna. 主 Krishna 以南达大军的儿子的身份降临，并不意味着。南大大尊的地位就高于 Krishna。下一个问题。下一个问题来自于陈娟，顶拜姑的，感谢主播。为什么分离会会产生狂喜呢 ？Why why why do become ecstatic in separation? Yeah, yes. Yeah, this is a, a spiritual emotion. In order to understand these kind of things, you have to understand more about the nature of bhakti yoga. 对于巴提瑜伽的本本质有更多的了解。但问题是，当你分离了某个人，你的感情对他会增加，你会想，当他来，当他会回来。但是呢，就是巴提瑜伽分离。会使一个人的爱，爱的情感更加增长。他会想着，他什么时候才能回来呀？什么时候才能见到他呀 ？The being being separate from someone, we appreciate them more, and our affection, our attachment for them increases. 在分离当中呢，我们就会更加欣赏另外一个人。我们对。So this remembrance of Krishna in this way causes ecstasy, causes the devotee to become ecstatic. 以这种方式来想想着 Krishna， 使一个奉献者内心就会生出狂喜之情。And that ecstasy is. When Krishna actually comes, when the union comes, when the person comes back, then you feel the great pleasure. She said the people are really genuine and 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 and, and selfish. Selfless. Oh, selfless. Okay, selfless. Okay. So is is this really bhakti yoga? Service. So I wonder what kind of service 
is the suitable service because previously I provide free service in another group, but now I contact Bhakti Yoga. I was moved and attracted by the OT because I found that in Bhakti Yoga, people, some people are really selfless, but the previous group, there, were, there may be some reason they come to serve. I wonder if this kind of uh, judgment, a kind of distinguishment, this is the first question. And Wait, okay, first question. Wait, I wonder, is this some kind of judgment if she judges people to be selfless? Because uh, she may be judged that the previous group is not uh, selfless as Bhakti Yoga. Oh. Oh. Well, yes, it may be a judgment. You know, uh, you may, you may find sometimes, you know, you, in the beginning, sometimes when we first come to Krishna consciousness, we may think, oh, all the devotees are very nice and selfless. But then after some time, then our opinion may change. Yeah, you may, you may get to know people in a different way and you see that, oh, I, you know, parents, some people are, are not selfless. So you have to really want, you should really try to understand the philosophy, the teaching. Don't just simply judge people. Now some, some devotees may be good and some devotees may not be so good. So it's very important that you should understand the teachings yourself. Not just only by judging people. Of course, meeting good people in the beginning that can help you in the beginning. But I just worry that after some time, you may get another, you may get a different impression. So you have to appreciate the teaching. The Arbufan Tadawanti. She also, in the beginning, she, she asked what kind of service is the proper service. So the proper service begins with hearing. You have to hear and then you have to chant. You have to take up the chanting of the Maha Mantra as a regular daily practice. You have to take up the chanting of the Maha Mantra as a regular daily practice. 
Maha Mantra. This is proper service. have to understand the teachings of bhakti yoga you have to be, you have to examine and study for yourself and make the decision are you going to practice and you want to take up bhakti yoga you have to try it out and you have to feel the effect to practice, take up the chanting, follow the principles and try it out for some time. You don't purchase everything immediately. You want to try it out first. You want to check it out, make sure that it's good for you, it's working and that you're able to practice. We don't say you have to commit immediately. We give everyone some time to 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 investigate. So you examine it carefully and find out if you are able to take up the practice. mentioned in Prabhupada's books.
Well, it's up to every devotee to decide which particular form of Krishna you're attracted to. Everyone's an individual and you have your particular taste and attraction, so you can decide which form of Krishna or which particular form of God you want to worship. But Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda are very merciful and they're very easy to worship. Okay, shall I go with it? Krishna is the master of all yoga powers. The yogi, he can expand himself up to nine times, but each expansion will be like a reflection, it will be a mirror image of the original form. But when Krishna expands, he can expand himself unlimitedly and they can be doing totally different things in every different place. So Krishna's power is so much greater than any yogi power. And the yogi powers, they get that power from Krishna. What is mysticism? I don't know. Yes. Both. Where the individual soul is, there will be a super soul. be affected if we take shelter of guru what 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 will happen is that we will not be we will not be affected uh, by covid yes and she she replied no yes and her daughter asked why she cannot answer reply well we have we, we will not be affected by COVID if we're very careful to avoid people who've got COVID. Mm, 
If you go into the jungle and there's a tiger there, you may be eaten, even though you're a devotee of Krishna. So, so devotees careful not to take unnecessary risks. It's not Krishna's job to protect us. We have to make sure we protect ourselves, not be careless. It's not fair, it's not impersonalism and it's not transcendental either. It's just a, an individual state of mind that he's not very sociable, he doesn't enjoy being with devotees. He has to, one should become attracted by the association of devotees and the, or, or rather the association of devotees should be attractive. There should be nice kirtan, nice atmosphere to attract people. Then we will want to associate with devotees. But somebody doesn't like to go and associate with devotees doesn't mean they're an impersonalist, just means they're not very sociable. And sometimes people are just lazy. They don't like to go to associate. And, and just because they don't go doesn't mean they're transcendental. They're not transcendental. Transcendental means everything in relation to Krishna is transcendental. Shall I go and take? No, no more. No. Hare Krishna. Good day. Ah. 就是我，嗯，这个我我们回答的问题都已经回答了，但是，嗯，前面有一个问题，我想进一步帮他问一下，就是那个淡然一笑，马，呃，马德基吧，他前面问到了，就是关于南达马达，呃，那个马哈拉，就是说他。您讲到了他是 Nitya Sita， 就是永恒解脱的这个同游嘛。但是因为在快乐源泉里又说到了他的上一世，他有这个转世的这个情况嘛。我想他可能是想问问这两个，好像有点矛盾。嗯。What Nanda Maharaj and that he he's also drunk Dara a previous life. Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda are Drona and Dara. Nanda Dara. It's Chigga Venti Ma. Yes. Yeah. So, it's not a contradiction, it's just a change in the name. But there's Drona and Dara are also Krishna's mother and father. It's the same position as Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. They just have different names. Uh, 
周呢和 Dara， 那只是他们仍然是是父父母 ，Krishna 的父母。I don't know how else I can explain it, and, but Krishna's mother and father are only these two people, but they come in different, different, different places, different names. But in Vrindavan, in Gokula, and in Goloka, the Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. They are the only ones who are always. Krishna's mother and father, not in the sense, well, in the sense that they are the ones who enjoy Krishna's childhood pastimes. I can't explain it anymore. No, oh, uh, Vasudev and Devaki, are they the same incarnation? What? The same as what incarnation? <laughs> They're also in the spiritual world. Vasudev and Devaki, they, t they, t they appear in Mathura, but they also, they're also there in the spiritual world. They're in Dwarka. Dwarka in the spiritual world, right? We said it's an extension of Vaikuntha. So they're there. They're also Krishna's mother and father. But they don't enjoy Krishna's childhood Leela. That's only Nanda and Yashoda. Right, the, the, the most pleasurable part of having a child, you enjoy the child growing up as a young child, you know, it's so pleasing. You know, Sati Mataji, remember when you had your son, he was a little boy, how you can dress him and how you can pick him up and cuddle him and how you can hold his hand. But now, you know, it's a very different relationship. Your son has grown up. You know, you, you don't have the same relationship with him. It's not so pleasurable. It's 
So Krishna reserves that position of his mother and father only for Nanda and Yashoda. Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, they're much greater devotees than Vasudeva and Devaki. All right. Well, we can finish. Okay. 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 Uh, Gorbag Dabrinki, Hare Krishna.